that when some things happen in your life, they are meant to be. 33 years ago, I decided to take psychiatry as my specialty. My exposure to psychiatry was just those 15 days of clinical posting in undergrad days, which were often bunked. It was one of my friends who thought that I would make a great psychiatrist. Don't know how she had that vision. The decision to take psychiatry created a furor in my house. My family and relatives were all aghast. And I got questions like, why psychiatry? Can't you do something else? I understood stigma when I got the questions like, do you want to be called a mad person's doctor? What are people going to say? And to top it all, how do you think we'll get married? It's almost like who will give a guy to a lady psychiatrist? And where are you going to have patients coming to your clinic? So that just shows the extent of stigma. Well, I decided to go on with my decision and looking back, I have not regretted it at all. Reflecting, I also feel I don't think I could have been any other doctor than a psychiatrist. But friends, the stigma related to psychiatry existed not only three decades ago, but still continues today. Nothing's changed. Despite humongous efforts by mental health professionals, government organizations, non-government organizations to reduce stigma and create awareness about mental health. Taking up psychiatry, I realized that there were more hurdles to face. Patients did not want to come to the OPD. Patients refused to take medications. Relatives did not bring patients. Relatives themselves did not want to be seen in psychiatric OPDs. So many of them did not even inform their next of kin regarding the psychiatric problem. And more so, I had many of them telling me that faith healers would probably do a better job than I did. Well, stigma, myths, and misconceptions, so, so prevalent. And you feel so disheartened. And my question was, why didn't we speak about mental health? Why did not we talk about its importance? And then I reflected that from school, college, even med school, the entire importance has always been given to physical health. We talk about eat healthy, sleep well, do physical exercises to keep your body fit and fine. Nobody talks about the most important organ in your body, the brain. Nobody talks how to keep it healthy. How many of us have been told, have fun, be excited in doing your normal routine, be happy, be satisfied, capture those memories so that they come to use on a rainy day? How many of us have been told, yes, you have strengths, you can overcome your weaknesses. Why don't you bolster your self-esteem, your self-confidence? Why don't you do self-talk? All we've been told is achieve, achieve, and achieve. Today, in this era of competition, comparison, we are all super achievers. But how many of us are happy and satisfied with our achievements? We have to ask ourselves. As I would talk to those children and adolescents who were referred from schools or maybe brought by parents for academic problems or behavioral problems, I found there was a huge mismatch between the parental expectations and what the kid actually wanted. And that is when I realized that, yes, somebody has to tell them about parenting. Somebody has to do mental health literacy in talking about normal child and adolescent development, what should be the parenting style and what is to be expected. That is when I started writing in vernacular 
in various local magazines. Some of them would be uh, weekly, some bi-weekly, and some quarterly. I kept on writing for two years, series of articles, talking about all aspects of parenting, talking about problems in preschoolers, schoolers, adolescents, till I had finished my quota. And the response was phenomenal. I would get calls from across the country by anybody who's read those articles, wanting to understand the right way of parenting and whether the child had any problems. For me, it was a big thing because I had managed to reach out to probably educate one parent with the hope that he will educate five others. So is mental health advocacy difficult? Not at all. Where there is a will, there is a way. In my 30 years of practice, I have seen patients from all walks of life. Oh, when they come to psychiatry, they always say, no, I don't think I have a problem. I just need a little bit of counseling. I have seen students, med students, who are battling depressive symptoms, trying to adjust and juggle their lives with academic stressors, peer pressure, and of course, relationship issues. If I ask them, get a friend or get a family member, they don't want to. None of them feel it is important. They definitely don't want to take medication. They are just okay with counseling. Counseling doesn't help every psychiatric problem. That is what we have to understand. I have another set of patients. They get angry on being referred to psychiatry. I have them come and sit in front of me and ask, I have aches and pains. Why has my doctor referred to a psychiatrist? Doctor, do you think I look crazy? Am I mad that a psychiatrist has to treat me? Then I have to sit with them and tell them about the mind-body connection and why their referring doctor has sent them to the psychiatrist. But do you understand? We have to keep on talking, explaining. But mind you, you go to any other doctor and whatever the doctor says and whatever the treatment is given, you accept it. In psychiatry, you do not because you have your own opinion. And that is because the mental health awareness is so poor. The statistics are extremely shattering. We have more than 200 million people who are afflicted with common mental disorders. And the treatment gap is a shocking 75 to 85%. That means only 15 to 25% of people actually come to the psychiatrist. Above all, there are only 10,000 psychiatrists in India. If I add the therapists, counselors, social workers, the number will be 15,000. Tell me, how will 15,000 people look after a population of 140 billion? And tell me, how are they going to do mental health advocacy? Definitely not. That's why we need you, we need all med students, we need general public, we need all medical practitioners joining us in this campaign of inculcating a change in the mindset of people where I make each person responsible for his own mental health and take steps to achieve positive mental health. Psychiatry and psychiatrists have always been seen through a colored lens. Psychiatry has been considered a sham discipline by many. In fact, it is a neurobehavioral science with a strong biological basis. And we have very standardized diagnostic criteria and treatment regimens. Psychiatrists have been considered weirdos. They themselves could be having the problem, that's why they've taken psychiatry, is a very strong notion. Could be. But I have faced flack from relatives, from friends, from colleagues when they say, you know, as a psychiatrist, you just seem to give a red, yellow, and a green pill. What else can you all do? What else can you all improve? Well, difficult to say. It hurts me when I see my esteemed colleagues tell their patients, stop psychiatric medication. Why? because they are sleeping pills. 
they are habit forming and you know what they are going to damage your liver heart kidney is it true every medication has side effects not only psy psychotropics i think we have to stop spreading this misinformation a population which is already diffident on coming to psychiatrists when i give them this information i get non compliance people stop taking medications what does it lead to chronicity poor referral rates worsen prognosis increase disability adjusted life years and who takes the toll the health infrastructure the caregivers and the economy of the country is definitely burdened so friends what we need is not only an aware individual i need an aware medical professional so wherever and whenever i get the chance i liaison with my colleagues and give them an idea about the mental health of the patient they have referred to me these 30 years i have used every possible means and mediums to create awareness writing i've already told you i have authored four books in parenting one on communication for general public we are invited as experts to talk on various health related topics i use every opportunity to relate and to talk to people and improve their awareness at various fora i have used street plays and posters as a medium of communication lately i have also used drama to create this connect between people telling them about the various mental health symptoms and the treatment possibilities and yes the response has been truly phenomenal advocacy is important especially in our country because if i am able to dispel this single myth that mental illness is due to wrath of god or black magic the result will be phenomenal it will be remarkable as people will come forth for treatment last year i was just talking about this passion of mine on one of our picnics with my batchmates of medical school and i talked about this inadequacy of being able to reach out that is when an idea of app was sown my friend said hey, today is a digitally te technologically advanced world you need to have an app which is accessible to all because everybody carries a mobile the idea was great but i did not know where to start because i am not so technologically savvy questions about funding came who will fund i decided to self fund one of my friends came forth and said she has a professional team and we would brainstorm and come up with ideas my objectives were asked which i said were to make each and every individual aware of his or her or their own mental health and take steps to improve the same so we needed to have a questionnaire a standardized questionnaire by means of which people would come to know their mental health or how they are feeling today the professional team told me it is very difficult for individuals to engage to question and answers so we decided to make it in a gamified format all the 10 questions were put in the form of a game every day a new quiz after coming to know how you feeling i had to offer them some strategies to self help so there was a self help zone which included various physical activities like doing yoga breathing techniques walking and all this with all information given in the app music was included because it is a greatest stress buster so there are some recorded tracks there were wellness cards cards which talked about physical and mental wellness there were self affirmations by means of which if i could read it every day i will bolster my self esteem my self confidence and i am i will be able to cope with the stressors of normal life there was a corner to put down your thoughts every day something which i could reflect at the end of the week or maybe at the end of the month and see if there is a change since i had to reach out to the general public the app had to be in vernacular languages made it in three english hindi and marathi it is absolutely free 
so that people can access it. It took me about eight months to come up with the complete app and it got launched on uh, 15th October 2023. It is known as Saksham Mental Wellness App. Of course, being a medico, not having any business background, we, I did not know how to market the app. I'm stuck there. But we did write to Google and it soon became available on Play Store in November 23. It is right now for Android users. For the iOS platforms, they can download it from the website. Along with it, I also thought I needed some jazzy song, something which becomes like a mental wellness anthem, something which people can relate to if they want to come out of, say, depression. So I made a song, Sal Tu Pudhe, which is on Spotify. These were all my efforts, actually, just to drop in the ocean. I am waiting for it to become a ripple and a wave of change. Passion, fueled by purpose, and hopefully we'll see progress. Friends, mental health is not about madness, badness, or sadness. It is also about preparedness. So let's take a pledge today that we will look after our own mental health and make this world a place with positive mental attitudes. Thank you.